I've had an interest in astronomy since I was in high school. I've owned many different kinds of telescopes over the years. I spent many an hour looking through an eyepiece and have taken a few photographs of the moon using a telescope and camera. But I haven't photographed an eclipse. With an annual eclipse coming up in a few weeks on October 14th, I thought I'd give it a try. Let's take a look at the essential equipment we'll need. We need a camera that has a manual mode setting. Basically, we need to manually adjust the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. I'm using a DSLR digital camera, but you can also use a film camera as well. The camera just has to have a manual sighting capability. The camera will also need to accept a solar eclipse filter. These filters come in a variety of sizes. If you don't know the size you need, just look at the lens of your camera. Usually on the rim of the lens, you can see a circle with a diagonal line through it. This is a mathematical symbol for diameter. This, this is followed by some number. Those numbers indicate the size of the filter to fit the lens. Mine is 58 millimeter, so my filter needs to fit a 58 millimeter lens. Another essential piece of equipment is a tripod. Size doesn't really matter, you just need to keep the camera steady. The last essential piece of equipment is a pair of solar glasses. Looking directly at the sun during an eclipse will damage your eyes and cause permanent blindness. Plastic solar glasses like these cost about the same as a decent pair of sunglasses. These are eclipsers. You can also even get the paper kind that they hand out to children to watch during an eclipse. Now you might get a good photograph with the camera, a filter, and tripod alone. But there are some other items that could improve your photos and make the experience more enjoyable. When taking photographs, it's important not to wiggle or bump the tripod. It may cause a blurry photo. To avoid this, use a shutter release with a film camera and an intervalometer when using a digital camera. I have my camera, I have my solar filter, I have my eclipse glasses, and I have my tripod. And I have a tripod with an attached, clock-driven, equatorial mount. I use this tripod because once it's set up, it tracks the sun, so I don't have to adjust for the sun's movements. The eclipse is going to last approximately three hours. I plan on taking one shot every 10 minutes or 18 photos. With a standard tripod, I would have to adjust the tripod for every shot. That is, every 10 minutes. I take my shot and then 10 minutes later I have to adjust the tripod because the sun has moved from my field of view. This is not a problem, just a bit of work. At your chosen intervals, for me every 10 minutes, you'll adjust your camera settings and position of your tripod or the position of your camera on the tripod. As the solar eclipse progresses, you'll likely pan and tilt in increments depending on how much time between shots. You can also move the tripod itself and adjust your settings as needed. Now, let's do a little field test. For the test, I'm using a 75 by 300 millimeter telephoto lens. However, a standard 55 millimeter lens that comes with the camera will work just as well. First, we attach the solar filter. Just a matter of screwing it on. Never point your camera directly at the sun and open the shutter without the filter, firmly secured to the lens. It will burn out the sensor in the back of your camera in a split second 
and that's an expensive repair. One more non-essential but very helpful piece of equipment is a computer monitor. I'm shooting the Eclipse in my backyard so I have access to electricity and I connect my camera to the monitor. Now we can watch what's happening on the monitor rather than on a little 3 inch screen on the back of the camera. Let's take some test shots at different settings. I mount my camera on the tripod with the lens attached and the solar filter in place. I put a piece of painter's tape around the end of the lens. This keeps the focus from shifting. I add the intervalometer to the camera, connect the camera and monitor. I'll take several pictures at several settings. These settings are a good place to start. ISO 100 or 200. Aperture settings between f8 and f16 with shutter speeds of 1 500th of a second down to 1 30th of a second. The monitor shows us a screen of the digital camera. For the demo here, the video camera watches the monitor screen while I make changes to my camera. And when you take a photograph, the image comes up on the monitor. This is an annular eclipse because the sun's outer edges are still visible during totality and form a ring of fire around the moon called an annulus. Here in Phoenix, we won't see the annular phase of the eclipse or ring of fire. We'll see a partial eclipse. The moon will cover about 80% of the sun, so it should be pretty exciting. For me, the eclipse starts at 8.10 a.m. To find out details about what the eclipse on October 14th looks like in your area, visit the website timeanddate.com and click the Solar and Lunar Eclipse link. On Saturday, October 14th, I'll be in my backyard preparing to photograph the solar eclipse. Within a few days of that, we'll post a video. See you then, and thanks for watching.